Good morning. It's my great honor to start this session, uh, to greet uh, um, all, the, all the guests and the, uh, all the participants. Uh, I would like uh, to have a special mention to Commendador Nazim Ahmed, uh, to uh, Professor Firoz Razul, who comes from a long way to, uh, uh, to attend this, uh, this conference and to give some words to us, and Professor Antonio Rendas, uh, in the external scientific review panel uh, that has um, uh, followed us in this journey. Uh, just first a very brief um, uh, mention about uh, a program that many of you know uh, very well for being uh, um, active participants. Uh, so this program uh, uh, was built from a joint venture between uh, uh, FCT, the Foundation for Science and Technology, and the AKDN, so the uh, development network of the Aga Khan Foundation. Uh, uh, and um, uh, it started uh, roughly in 2016. So that's when uh, um, the, um, the program was set. And uh, then we had in 2018, uh, 17, 18, uh, uh, 16 projects that were funded. The main scope of these uh, projects is, of course, to uh, use science and technology uh, for uh, the sake of development. Uh, it's mostly uh, targeted at Africa, African countries, uh, and uh, it, uh, it means a strong opportunity for cooperation between Portuguese universities and especially the uh, universities of the uh, AKDN. Uh, so the, the, that's a process that uh, we should all do an effort to develop and to uh, deepen. Um, so this cooperation is indeed uh, targeted at um, uh, improving the quality of life, of, at solving the many uh, challenges that uh, societal and uh, in health, in agriculture, in food production, uh, that uh, in industry development that uh, are faced by these countries. Uh, there is a parallel effort that I would like to mention here also, which is called the Ciencia LP. Ciencia LP is, um, uh, is a program that uh, uh, pro seeks to uh, capacitation, to provide capacitation for many African countries, more focused on uh, uh, Portuguese speaking African countries, but which also uh, has a goal of uh, uh, providing um, uh, 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 doctorates in areas that are uh, fundamental for the development of those countries. Uh, we have started with, uh, um, with uh, agricultural sciences, engineering, uh, now we are going into healthcare and biodiversity. Um, the uh, quality of life in Africa uh, was uh, uh, looked at from the lenses, from the projects of those first 16 projects, which are now uh, quite uh, advanced, uh, in biological sciences and medicine, uh, in engineering and in social sciences. So these were the key areas. But I would like to stress that um, the uh, perspective uh, in this program is very much one of uh, multidisciplinarity and impact. These are the key ideas. So uh, we would like uh, uh, that uh, researchers uh, may work together uh, amongst, uh, with uh, people from different tribes, from different areas that really can uh, help in developing uh, really impactful projects with an impact for uh, the quality of life uh, uh, in, area, in Africa. Uh, the, in 2020, uh, we had uh, the, second, um, the second call and um, uh, we were overloaded with, uh, 200, with over 200 applications, but uh, um, the panel that uh, uh, always helps us in, the assess in assessing the program uh, was really uh, um, uh, surprised by the quality of the, of the applications, and we ended up with uh, supporting uh, 21 projects, uh, uh, a total of 5 million euros, uh, and um, um, the, this was a, a, a process in, uh, which was accelerated with the, uh, the commitment of AKDN and the FCT. So um, this is the state of the art in, in this situation. Uh, and um, I, I would like also to mention that uh, about 13 African countries are now uh, covered by these, um, uh, uh, these projects in some way. Uh, but of course, 
it's always our goal to expand and to have a, a, broader, a broader influence. And uh, well, this is the very brief notes that I would like to share with you. And uh, I would like uh, now to uh, pass, to give the floor uh, to Commendador Nazim Ahmed with my deep thanks for uh, being us and addressing this uh, audience uh, uh, right now. Thank you very much. The Vice President of the Foundation of Science and Technology, my friend Zé Paulo Esperança, President of the Aachen University, Führers Rasul, Aachen University Trustee and Chair of the External Scientific Review Panel, Antonio Renders, members of the External Scientific Review Panel, speakers and guests. Welcome to this session about initiative knowledge development for development, which is jointly developed by Portuguese Republic of the Ismaili Mam and Ismaili Mamet to the Foundation of Science and Technology and the ICAN Develop Network. I will start by thanking you for the availability and interest on this session and also by conveying our appreciation to the Ministry of Science and Technology and Higher Education for the inclusion of this session in the program of the 2021 Encontro Ciencia. This initiative is unique in, my, in, in many ways. On one hand, it is being implemented under the protocol of cooperation signed between Ismaili Mamet and Ministry of Science in 2016 as a materialization of the commitment for support to the world-class research in script in the, in the 2015 International Treaty of the Establishment of the Seat of Ismaili Mahmoud in Portugal. This initiative is therefore yet another example of the spirit of the partnership and cooperation which has, been, has guided to the relation between Ismaili Mahmoud and Portugal in the, in the, in the decades. On the other hand, is likely is, is a key goal is to promote collaborative research between institutions from the multiple countries and from the AADN, which may result in improvement of the quality of life of people in Portugal, in Portuguese-speaking country, and elsewhere. This initiative seeks not only to improve the research capacity in Portugal and it made different geographically, but is also pursue the fundamental goal of having a positive impact in the society where they are based. Another special feature related to the very close and continuous follow-up being undertaken by external scientific review panel, chair by Professor Antonio Renders, and which members are here today to ensure that projects are being executed according to their guiding principles and objectives and will indeed have impact in the quality of life of people. As we have now finalized the second call of this initiative, we are very excited and with a project which have started and with those which will now begin. These have a significantly further to the cooperation agenda between Ismaili Mahmoud and AKDN Portugal in the research field and the wider scope of partnership in higher education. We are now, of course, very ho hopeful that partnership and presence of the EKDN institution connected with higher education and other educations and research domain will grow in the years ahead in the wide number of fields as a reflection of a strong spirit of collaboration that connect us and also of very good quality of universities and research institutions in the country, particularly 
on commonality which can be established with our current developed network agencies globally. I thus celebrate this initiative, and I would like to acknowledge all those who have been wholeheartedly contributing for this success, including the Ministry of the Science and all those at FCT who have done extraordinary work to push this initiative forward. Vice President, Zé Paulo Esperança, thank you so much for, your, for you and for your team for your hard work. In particular, I would like to convey a word to special gratitude to our minister, Professor Manuel Eitor, who throughout all the stage of this project has been fundamental in advancing with this initiative from its onset. I would like to take, to, I would like to take thanks to the president of the Aachen University, Fior Rasul, who's here today physically with us and general manager of our current foundation, who are, who are my fellows, fellows members of the AKDN side at the Joint Implementation Com Committee that provide oversight and direction for this initiative. Their knowledge, endeavors, and recommendations have been crucial and added much value for this whole project. I also convey my appreciation to my dear friend, Professor Anton Rendes, for his wisdom, for his vision, and enthusiasm for this initiative. And all the other members of this General Scientific Review Panel for their commitment and valuable, and, and valuable contribution. Finally, I would like to highlight the over, overarching dialogue and collaboration between, between Portugal and Ismaili Mahmoud which ranged for many years. This spirit of friendship, open collaboration, and joint work to promote a quality of life of people is a powerful example to the world, which is too often mixed by tension and lack of dialogue. We'll certainly continue in this spirit dialogue in pursuit of the knowledge in defense of human dignity and the valuing of diversity to build better societies. I leave now the floor for the next speakers so that they may share the progress in this initiative and lead you to envision an impact that it will bring for the improvement of quality of life globally. Thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, uh, we are almost uh, uh, taking too much time and the purpose of this uh, session is to listen to the researchers. So I'm going to, to be very quick in my presentation, but I cannot help to greet the, pre the Vice President of FCT, Sr. Jepo Esperança, the Himamat, the Ismaili representative, my good friend. Uh, Nassim Ahmad and uh, also my good friend Firoz Razul, the president of KU. And if I may, I'm not sure if she's, she's left the room, but uh, the commissioner, Paula Halves, who, who, who greeted us all, she's one of the three commissioners of this CNC 2021. And she's also a, a good friend. And I want to greet everybody, the researchers, the members of the External Scientific Review Panel. Uh, my, my purpose here is just to, in a way, tell you how the session will run, and this is why I'll try to be quick, and I was fortunate that the two presentations before me really covered a lot of my notes, so I'm, I'm going just to, I was trying to pinpoint the things that you need to know about this. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, all the information concerning the, the development of this project is very important, and. Uh, uh, I think that we should also pay tribute to, as you both have to Mr. Manuel Leitor, 
because on, uh, on 2016, uh, President Firoz and me and Nazim were at Laranjeiras talking about this, this project and it is fantastic that we, we are here with you doing the work and, uh, and it was his vision that in fact allowed this, uh, this partnership and of course the Imamat and, uh, and uh, the, the, the enormous uh, uh, supervision of His Highness. Information that you probably don't know but you may need to know the, the SRP is composed of five elements. Uh, it is uh, Elena Nazaré from Aveiro, and she's not here. Maomed Azim from Ixté, and he's here. Jaime Nina from the Instituto de Higiene e Tropical. Pedro Pozão from IPMA. And, uh, and myself. The projects involve, in some cases, more than one African institution, which is interesting, and also involve Portuguese institutions from the north in Minho, to the south in Algarve, and this is also very, very interesting. And if you look at single countries, single Portuguese-speaking African countries, six projects are from Mozambique, just from Mozambique, three from Angola, two from Cabo Verde, and one from Guinea-Bissau, and then we have partnerships, which is so important, as, uh, as uh, Vice President José Paulo Pressa mentioned. So there's one with Mozambique and Angola, another one with Mozambique, Angola, Nigeria, and another one, Mozambique, São Tomé, Príncipe, and Tanzania. So we are spreading. We, I know that uh, there's a hidden agenda to try and involve as many AQDN institutions, AQ institutions, but I think that uh, we are moving uh, and the word spread. Scientists are very good spreading the word between themselves. So maybe in the third call we'll have, I hope, uh, AKU institutions. Now, uh, uh, Professor Jepov Prince mentioned this, but I, I, I also would like to emphasize that the thematic areas are very broad, and they cover life sciences, health, exact science and engineering, and social sciences, with a major concern on the application of knowledge for improving quality of life in the, in the Portuguese-speaking African countries. And this was also the decision of Professor Manuel Litor, because he, he decided to say that, uh, let's see how are these relationships scientifically. Of course, we Portuguese and our uh, our fellow friends from Africa, we, we get along very well for meals and to go along and to sing, but we wanted to see if there were any roots based on hundreds of years of cooperation. In fact, we were very surprised, I was very surprised to see how many of these uh, institutions in, in Portuguese-speaking countries did respond, and I'll be telling you briefly, briefly about that. So, as, 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 uh, as uh, the two previous speakers said, uh, SRP was, was appointed by the stakeholders to develop a monitoring methodology to assess the progress of the work performed by the research team in partnership with FCT. I want to emphasize that. I also want to thank all the support that FCT, Tiago Sabrida, and the team has been giving to, to this project. In the initial phase, this was back in 2018, we reviewed the applicants and developed a sort of a, a form that is now is used for the, for the, for the progress reports. There's not a tradition in Portugal to, to have evaluation as the projects go on. So, and I'm not surprised because if you have 300 projects to follow, it's very difficult. So we're very privileged, 16 we profited to learn and develop this type of methodology, which we hope will be useful. We also, in, the, in, the, in our process, we try to interview, in fact, in, in September, October 2018, we interviewed all the PIs, and we reviewed the chronogram and all the, all the important issues that, uh, that are part of the, of, the, of the evaluation of the progress report. And the progress report relates to uh, very, very simple issues that, in fact, are now shared between the PIs and the SRP. And, the, and, the, and the, 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 the main issues that we try to evaluate are the milestone list, including a chronogram, the expected output indicators, and the scientific spreading through the communication. And we do this on an early basis because we also believe that uh, science that is becoming more evident with the pandemic needs to be communicated to, to society. And we need to, it's the duty of the scientists to do that. And uh, for us, it was particularly important to see that done in Angola, Mozambique, and the other Portuguese-speaking countries. Uh, so the, the projects were evaluated uh, uh, in 2020, in January. And now we just finished the second year uh, in May 2021. 
And I want to tell you that despite the pandemic, the overall assessment of projects was favorable and that the SRP played a key role in maintaining the projects on track. Sorry, uh, can you please uh, uh, keep your mouth shut? Thank you. Eu peço desculpa, não se importa onde não falar alto, só se favor. Muito obrigado. Despite the pandemic, the overall assessment of the project was favorable and the SRP played a key role in maintaining the project on track and facilitating uh, uh, the possibility of an extension of the project without additional funding for a period ranging between six and 18 months. We did that in the middle of the second year because the pandemic was coming and all these parts are related to traveling and uh, there was a, a, a report, a request to FCT that was evaluated by SAP and now all the projects except two have received the clearance to, to proceed for another period ranging between six and 18 months. Uh, until now, all the extension was, was, as I said, was approved. And also, the 14 projects out of 16 also received their last slice of funding. So, uh, they have no complaints, which is something that is very good, because the, I got that information from FCT, so they are now funded for the third year. And of course, we are all expecting for the We hope that uh, when we finish in a year's time that we'll be able to have a big event involving everybody from uh, the Portuguese-speaking countries. At least I know this is what the minister expects. So, uh, without further delay, and we, we only have an hour and a half, my suggestion is that we start with the first uh, presentation. And the first presentation uh, is uh, uh, by... Uh, uh, the University of Minho is the project uh, uh, Culture Past and Present. And uh, 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 there'll always be a member of SAP, in this case is uh, Professor Mohamed Aminu comment. And I asked uh, the, the members of SAP to do exactly as we do when we evaluate the project. So they'll, they'll have the forms that I mentioned and they'll, they'll tell you, but the researchers know a little bit of what are going to be our comments, but please. Can you state your name and, uh, and, uh, and start? You have around 10 minutes, thank you. Good morning. My name is Isabel Macedo. Uh, I come from University of Minho, and uh, on behalf of uh, Professor Moisés Martins, I would like to thank you, FCT, and Agacan for the invitation uh, to be here today, sharing um, some of the work we are developing um, in our project. Um, our project is entitled Memories, Cultures and Identities, How the Past Waits on the Present Intercultural Relations in Mozambique and Portugal. Um, this project is coordinated by Professor Moisés Lemos Martins and Rosa Cabecinhas um, in Portugal, University of Minho, and in Mozambique. It is coordinated by Elisio Mabasso in the Eduardo Mondlan University. Um, the main aims of this project were and still are, because we are uh, in the final year of execution of the project, um, is collect, preserve, reproduce and disseminate cultural, educational and historical narratives conveyed in Mozambican and Portuguese public sphere and allow a sex uh, of population to these narratives 
to the, 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 this cultural heritage, uh, to expressions of memory and representations of identity that promote mutual knowledge, interaction and cultural translation. To do that, we, um, uh, our project is organized in four main tasks. Um, and we collected in Portugal and in Mozambique um, museum collections um, in, the, in Portugal, in the Portuguese Museum of Ethnology, and in Mozambique, in the Museum of Ethnology in Nampula. We also collected uh, films produced in Mozambique and in Portugal. Um, we have a database uh, with uh, about 300 films and uh, all the information about these films produced since the beginning of uh, the cinema in both countries. Um, the um, uh, important thing about this database is that uh, we select only those films that talk about intercultural relations um, and uh, memory among uh, these both countries. We also uh, collected history uh, textbooks um, in Mozambique and Portugal, and we have a, a big database with these materials. Um, we are analyzing now, and we, uh, we published uh, several articles uh, analyzing these materials, but we are publishing um, in particular about the textbooks, the history textbooks, uh, currently in use in both countries. You are, we are analyzing the personalities that are portrayed, the um, historical moments, questions of gender, for example. Um, so we are uh, working on, the, in particular, in how these materials, uh, what representations and images are covered by these materials in both countries. And based on the materials that we collected, we are using them as stimulus to discuss and uh, talk with high school students in both countries. For example, we uh, used uh, excerpts of 48 from Susana Sousa Dias, a young Portuguese filmmaker, and we also used excerpts from A Memory in Three Acts from Inaldes Costa, a Mozambican, a young Mozambican filmmaker. Uh, they are documentaries um, about uh, dictatorship, uh, and uh, they are uh, t testimonies of uh, uh, political prisoners uh, during the, the dictatorship and colonialism. And it's interesting because we have testimonies of, uh, in 48, of Portuguese and Mozambican um, uh, uh, prisoners, ex-prisoners, and in memory in three acts uh, of Mozambique. And he, uh, the students, we unfortunately, because of the pandemic, could, could not uh, uh, organize and conduct all the focus groups that we intended to, but we will uh, start again in uh, September. Uh, but students were very uh, surprised with uh, these testimonies and these images. So uh, students uh, talk about, talked about the, the fact that they didn't, don't know about the past, in this past. And uh, listening to these people uh, were very important for them, in, uh, and to, to, uh, for them to think about the author and the future intercultural relations. Um, uh, concerning the social impact of the project and specific dissemination of our results, uh, we, as I said say uh, uh, before, we developed uh, two, two databases, uh, films and school textbooks, to be published in the University of Minho Data Repository in open access, so uh, all researchers that are interested in these topics can use these materials. Um, this is, a, in our view, a, an important instrument to, for scientific dissemination. Uh, we published uh, 
research in intercultural communication based on these materials that were collected uh, in diversity, historical education, contributing for an open access science, both in English and in Portuguese languages. Uh, in the, we organized several uh, seminars and online meetings in the uh, moment of pandemic, but uh, also um, uh, it were also important in, the, in um, the continuity of this partnership with our colleagues in Mozambique. Um, recently, we organized a conference on culture and society in Zambez University in Mozambique. Uh, these are some examples of the activities that we have organized uh, so far. Some are very recent. Um, for example, the second one is the, the International Conference on Culture and Society that we organize in, pat in partnership with the uh, uh, University of Zambes. Uh, we talk about interculturality, uh, historic consciousness. Um, you al we also did some uh, film sc screens uh, and discuss some of the films of our data database. Um, and we also, and I will talk about this later, establish a partnership with the museum, uh, uh, museum Virtual Zofni Museum, um, in order to improve uh, dissemination of our materials. Um, we uh, did a, a, a partnership and we launched the, this museum in partnership with our, with our project uh, last year. And we uh, had the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, August Santos Silva, um, in, uh, in the University of Minho. Uh, he did a speech about the importance of Portuguese language and uh, the importance of the knowledge about these materials that we are collecting. Uh, we also published uh, and edited several uh, journals and uh, books in co-authorship with our colleagues of Mozambique, for example, with Alda Costa, but we also published articles uh, with our colleagues uh, that are working, uh, PhD students that are working in other themes. Um, this is a uh, a briefly resume of our um, publish, uh, the, the books and chapters, articles that we have published so far. Uh, some of them are indexed in important databases. Uh, so far we have uh, 10 co-authorships uh, with our colleagues from Sambic, uh, but, but we are in the, at this moment preparing a book in partnership, edited in partnership, and with contributions of the uh, of the, uh, the all members in all activities. Um, concerning training, we conducted advanced inter interdisciplinary training. Uh, we uh, organized two summer schools. Um, were held in framework of course summer with science competition launched by F FCT and JS. Uh, these are the names of, uh, names of two the two summer schools, for example, uh, our minister, uh, Manuel Eitor, were in the um, presentation of these results. This is our poster of Africa's summer school. We also, uh, these are Armando Armindo, they are Armando Armindo and Augusto Alberto, uh, they are PhD students from Mozambique that will be here in Portugal <coughs> soon. Uh, 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 Thanks to our project, uh, they will do us, uh, some internship in our project. The, then we have Lara Campinho, that is an undergraduate student um, that uh, if, did an internship in our project also. Um, in general, we have eight uh, PhD and PhD candidates that develop training under uh, this project. And we are also do, developing uh, several <coughs> partnerships um, with these institutions in diverse regions of Mozambique, offering the possibility of scientific internships. Um, we also develop a new PhD program in partnership with Zambes University. Uh, our uh, members of our project um, are doing, um, they go, go to Mozambique and participate in this PhD. 
Uh, in this partnership with the Museo Virtual de Lusofonia, uh, we uh, were uh, um, made in order to promote the public engagement with the archives. For example, it, why? Because Museo Virtual de Lusofonia is uh, by day about 300 visits. So it is important that we use this platform to promote it, to disseminate our materials. And I'm I am ending now just to say that recently, uh, this month, he organized an important meeting. For the first time, we are, uh, uh, worked together uh, five, I think, museums from different Portuguese African countries uh, that are working on future projects and part partnerships uh, uh, around these different countries. Thank you so much. Asim, can you please come in? You want me to from here? Whatever feels you more comfortable. Uh, good morning to everyone. I'll take off the mask. I think it's safe here. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation. José Paulo Esperanza, um, uh, my dear friend and my former supervisor of the master's thesis, so it's a long time. Uh, Antonio Rendas, uh, my friend, uh, uh, Elena Nazaré, who is not here with us, Jaime Nina, um, and Pedro Pouzão, my colleagues at ESRP, um, representatives of the Ismaili um, community, Comendador Nazim Ahmad, as the representative of the um, uh, Ismaili Mamad to the Republic of Portugal, president uh, of the Aga Khan University, uh, uh, President Firoz Rasul, and uh, last but not the least, uh, uh, Tiago Saburita and his team who have been instrumental uh, in facilitating all the work that is being uh, done here. Um, I was listening, uh, uh, just as uh, I was listening to, to uh, a couple, last week to, to um, the Minister, His Excellency, the Minister Manuel Editor, on thinking Portugal within the scientific thinking, uh, European scientific thinking. And I was thinking, how can uh, someone who is a man that comes from the sciences, uh, hard sciences, has been able to design um, a program, uh, a project, a program that uh, goes and links directly to the quality of life of people in the, in the social context. So, so uh, a, a word of mention on, on something that is not usual and uh, it's remarkable. Um, about this project, um, uh, cultures past and uh, present, um, uh, it's essentially a project um, um, that aims to facilitate a cultural, economic and social uh, uh, representations in Mozambique and in Portugal uh, by focusing on two main spheres, the educational uh, sphere and the arts and the, the cultural sphere. Uh, but in terms of the state, the, the project has collected um, um, in very important narratives uh, that, that are conveyed from uh, textbooks, from, uh, from museums, from, uh, from, uh, from the arts, from the cinema, uh, uh, with the involvement of secondary school students um, and teachers um, uh, to facilitate uh, reflection, reinterpretation and recreation of narratives about the past and the present um, uh, day intercultural relations, um, which has led to very interesting outcomes. Uh, one set of outcome is the pure heart um, uh, uh, state of the art publications in terms of scientific articles which have been presented here from books, uh, the organization of, the conference, of a conference, but very uniquely it has been able to create a very, very important uh, uh, educational, cultural and artistic platform that was also presented, presented here. Uh, so the question then becomes how can this be important, uh, how can this be linked to, to, to the quality of life of peoples. Essentially, the idea behind this project is that if you create a common ground in terms of human knowledge and you facilitate interpretations of pluralistic interpretations of the, of the narratives of the past and the present, you can essentially promote peace. And through promoting peace, you can develop 
uh, you can create economic development. And this is the beauty of these projects, which in general we would not find in pure, hardcore uh, uh, scientific projects that many of us are uh, uh, involved. involved. Um, uh, our overall assessment of the project is very positive. Uh, the pro this project, like other projects, have gone uh, through, through several hurdles. One hurdle is very common. Uh, we are not used to do cross-border uh, research collaborations. It's, uh, this involves a large amount of capacity building both across the two countries, uh, uh, Mozambique and, uh, and Portugal. But I guess here, uh, one thing that has played very uh, critically is the experience, obviously, of University of Minho, University of uh, Eduard Mondlan, obviously headed by Professor Lemge Martins and Eliseo Mabasso, uh, from, from Mondlan University and uh, other researchers and uh, uh, other universities such as University of Beira Interior, Zambez University, Institute of Journalism, and also uh, the Monitor Institute. Uh, and so their experience have been critical in facilitating not only the implementation of a very difficult project, very complex project, but this is a kind of a project that can show to us clearly how a project, a scientific project, hardcore scientific project, can have impact and uh, improve the quality of life of, um, of the peoples. So, once again, uh, congratulations to the people who chose this project or uh, who shortlisted this project and decided to fund this project, but also in particular to, to, to the team, uh, 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 University of Minho, Eduard Mundlan, and the, the research team that has been able to, to implement this project, in a very, uh, a, which is very highly complex because of its uh, connection, how do you link it to the quality of life, um, but also uh, impl being able to implement it in a highly complex environment of which we are all living and we know what it means to us. So, once again, thank you to the, to the FCT for, and the AKDN for inviting us here today. And also thank you for, to, the, to, the, to, to, the, to the team for making this work. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are going to the second uh, uh, presentation. I would like you please to keep the time. It's on life and natural science. It's the, the process is called CVA Agrodiversity. Uh, agrobiodiversity, sorry, and this is by Professor Maria Manuel Romeiras from Instituto Superior de Agronomia from the Universidade de Lisboa. Please, the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be here today and uh, uh, for the invitation to be here with uh, uh, the, the founders, the Agacan, uh, external reviewer, and also uh, with the FCT. Uh, I'm really happy to be here to present the main outputs of my project. As I have only 10 minutes, I will focus my presentation in the outputs and I will do only a screenshot of the, the, the main uh, uh, achievements that uh, we already uh, achieved during these two uh, years. Uh, the project is focused on uh, the Cabo Verde plant uh, diversity and also to reveal the unexplored uh, plant genetic resources. Uh, the first thing was to establish the collaborations with local institutions and uh, we are really lucky to have in our project the main governmental institutions from Cabo Verde, namely uh, University of Cabo Verde, uh, the Ministerio da Agricultura and Ambiente and also INIDA. So uh, I'm really pleased with that and uh, during these two years our collaborations were really improved and this was really important to achieve so many, I think, good results. 
these are the, the goals and the tasks, but I will not focus on the, 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 the main um, objectives and the tasks, but I prefer to focus on the, uh, the outputs that these uh, uh, tasks already uh, um, was uh, finished, some of the, the, the proposed uh, goals. So I will beginning when, uh, with uh, uh, we were able to uh, improve our knowledge about the plant diversity of Cabo Verde Islands. And uh, we publish the update of the Cabo Verde endemic flora and also how the knowledge was done since the colonization of the archipelago. We have um, uh, published this study with the curator of the, uh, the, the, the Museum of Natural History from <coughs> London that support also this study because they have the old plant collections from Cabo Verde. And uh, now we have a panoramic from the colonization of the islands, how the knowledge was done until now. And the, 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 the checklist of the Cabo Verde endemic flora was published. Also, we have all the Cabo Verde plant endemics. Uh, we have the DNA barcode of this species, and this is the base for future um, um, genetic diversity studies and also to trace the phylogeny and the origin of the flora. We already published some studies with particular groups, and also we uh, also look to the plants um, uh, and the, in the context of the Cabo Verde biodiversity, namely the other important group that are the reptiles. Uh, concerning the cytogenomics, we already have samples for, my, for more than 5,000 uh, specimens, and uh, now we publish a paper uh, with the, 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 the biggest plant radiation of the Macaronesian Islands. And also, it was finished uh, just this week and was submitted this uh, um, study with the uh, wild carrots that have in Cabo Verde one of the most important radiations. So we are really happy with that also. All the studies that we are performing, uh, uh, performing in the framework of this uh, uh, huge project uh, allow us to participate in other studies. And uh, uh, I was in charge of uh, um, the state of the art about the Cabo Verde terrestrial biodiversity that was published in a very good study uh, with marine biodiversity. So we have a panoramic how Cabo Verde is a unique biogeographic area in terms of terrestrial and marine biodiversity and was published with one of the best researchers from the University of Cabo Verde, Professor Rui Freitas. Also with reptiles, uh, and also with the, the group that works with more animal fields in the university. Uh, uh, we also trace the evolution of the vegetation since 5,000 uh, 5, years ago and uh, how uh, during the last 500 years the impact of the colonization of islands have changed the natural landscapes. This study was uh, done with uh, the, the um, uh, collaborators from Cabo Verde but was led by uh, Oxford University that is one of the most important researchers in terms of climatic changes and uh, um, uh, vegetation evolution. So we are really happy also to collaborate not only with uh, our partners from Cabo Verde, but put our research also in the top uh, universities in the world. Uh, these two studies, I think it's really important and have really impact in terms of Cabo Verde and receive uh, special attention by media and by local institutions. And we publish more or less a state of the art about agriculture things. Uh, the um, sustainable development goals and how Cabo Verde is achieved 
that and also about plant communities of Cabo Verde. These three studies were published with a, a strong collaboration with the University of Cabo Verde, our research teams, and uh, we are really happy with that. One of the main aims of our project wa was to training students uh, from Cabo Verde. And, uh, that it was really good because we have three PhDs from Cabo Verde in progress, almost uh, um, in, the, in the last year. And uh, Venezia, a student that made the, 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 uh, the master with us, achieved the first uh, uh, position in the grants that uh, was promoted by um, FCT and uh, agrarian schools. That, so I'm really happy with that with the work that she have done uh, with this project. She was the first uh, uh, student. She's there, I will talk uh, please. Uh, Danielson and Anisa, Anis uh, are um, doing their thesis in the framework of this project, but also support by uh, Tropic Man, that was a PhD. Uh, program uh, founded by uh, uh, FCT and uh, 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 have a focus on African students. Uh, uh, I will, uh, for finish, I want to talk about three master theses that were completed during this year and uh, really improve our knowledge on the, the uh, the plant resources from Cabo Verde. Jocelyn have uh, uh, published the pharmacological potential of some native plants from Cabo Verde, and uh, the results are really, really important and uh, interesting, will be published really soon. Uh, also, Venezia, that uh, student achieved uh, uh, 20 of 20 in the master that is promoted by Faculdade de Ciências and ISA. And uh, uh, we were able to identify the, 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 the most important plant genetic resources of Cabo Verde that are related with the cereal crops. And uh, the results were really important. The study is published in a very good uh, journal, uh, um, in Frontiers in Plant Science. And Venezia, we went to, to the field to Cabo Verde together, and Venezia get uh, the first uh, position uh, in uh, that uh, call that FCT promoted. Uh, also, we improved the knowledge on genetic resources of the leguminosa uh, family. Uh, a master degree was finished by Irumis, also a Cabo Verde um, a student, and the paper was uh, published this year and have a really impact in media and how the, these uh, studies are really having impact in terms of uh, improve uh, um, the knowledge on the, the Cabo Verde resources. Uh, also, these studies uh, are um, widespread in terms of Africa. And as we are talking about not only uh, about Cabo Verde, but also other geographic regions, I think it is really important because last uh, week it was published this study that uh, have data from Cabo Verde, from Angola, and from Mozambique. And it was, uh, uh, I think we, we have uh, very nice results and we are really happy because we merge some studies from students from Cabo Verde, Angola, and also from Mozambique. Uh, this is the panoramic of the studies that were published in uh, high-profile journals. That it's, I think it's really good for all of us, for the students from Cabo Verde that can achieve uh, uh, also other grants. I think puts the name of ISA, FCT, and AGACA in the, the best uh, um, uh, journals, that is also very important. Here in uh, uh, FCT, I have three posters with three PhD students, and also several communications reports, meetings were already organized in the framework of uh, our, our uh, uh, program. Only to resume, the media was really um, 
who gave uh, um, uh, uh, very importance to these studies concerning the, 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 the plant genetic resources, and uh, also um, uh, I would like to thank to FCT and uh, for the great support of Agaka. This is a great opportunity to, to, to do studies with Cabo Verde and uh, with Africa. Thank you very much. Now I ask Pedro, Pedro Pozão to make a short comment. I'm sorry to be such tired, but I want to keep it on time. Good morning. I want to thank to FCT, to uh, Agacan Foundation for the invitation, the invitation to be here and the invitation for the evaluation panel. I want also to my friend Antonio Reno that I meet 50, 60 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> when I have this side, and all my colleagues in the voice of panel. I have five projects to evaluate. They are all in, in Africa, of course, in Mozambique, in, in Angola, in, in Cape Verde, in, in Príncipe, and they are all affected by the pandemic. Maria Romero don't talk about this here, but all the projects were seriously affected by the pandemic because they are projects that must be done on the field. The people must go there and the people must come here to our labs to work, to learn, and it was a fit. So it's why they have more 18 months to, to develop the projects. For example, the project of uh, Maria Romeres have 17 papers peer review. It is a huge amount of papers. It is very important, but he put in the report that they have a lack of, for example, the people come to the, the labs to learn molecular biology. It's not possible by Zoom to, to teach molecular biology to the students or cytogenetics, for example. So this is very really important. So it was a very important work in this project and in the other ones. We have also a project in Cabo Delgado. It is a problem because Cabo Delgado and Mussambi have a serious war problems, but okay, they are doing the job. So I'm very happy with this kind of project. It is easy to, to, be, to make the evaluation of these projects. They have nine peer review papers in one year and four students with, that finished the thesis. It's what we have, we need more in the pandemic year. So I'm very happy to be and to look to this, all of these projects and especially for that one that Maria finished with 17 papers. It's not, not normal. It's very, very good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Pedro. It's a, it's a pleasure to see the President of Scientific Council of FIPMA discussing uh, uh, the, veg, the, 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 the wild species in Cabo Verde, so it shows that we are becoming very multidisciplinary and looking at the production of, scientific production is important. The other important thing is capacity building. I think that uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, Margarida and to, to our colleague, and we, 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 we plan to do, and you are warned about this, we plan to do a compilation of all the PhD students, the ones that you have, the ones that are standing by, because one of the things that has come very clearly from these projects is the amount of training that you're giving to the, to the people from Angola, from Mozambique, and we want to follow that. So it's it's very important that uh, you are continuing to, the, despite the pandemic. So we go to, this, to the third project. It's by Margarida Saraiva. She's from Porto, from the EBMC, and she'll be talking about uh, uh, tuberculosis in Guinea-Bissau. And uh, uh, the, 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 the discussant will be Jaimina from the Tropical Institute in Lisbon. So Margarida, please. So, good morning. Um, I don't know why this, oh, it is short. Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation, for being here today, it's a real pleasure. Um, and I'm here to talk about an infectious disease and what a year to talk about infectious diseases. So I'm going to talk about tuberculosis and I'm going to present you the MAF TB project which uh, occurs as represented here between Portugal and uh, Guinea-Bissau. 
So uh, tuberculosis remains a major public health issue. There are uh, very scary numbers associated with it. So we have 10.4 million new cases, 1.4 million deaths per year. We have a, um, a quite a big rise in the number of uh, multidrug resistant cases, so very difficult to treat. And the treatment itself is very long and toxic. So, because of all this, tuberculosis remains the first cause of death by a bacterial infection and before COVID, the first cause of death by a single pathogen. Now, this problem is particularly severe in Africa, where the TB burden is really, really high, as you can appreciate from this incidence graph. And so, um, there are uh, a lot of work to be done in, in the area of tuberculosis to solve this problem and in particular to come up with new solutions. And one of the things that we always uh, like to, to, to stress is that tuberculosis is a perpetuator of poverty and poverty is a perpetuator of tuberculosis. So we have a big problem and it is therefore not surprising that ending TB is within the UN sustainable goals. So what's our angle on tuberculosis? We are fascinated by the fact that the bacteria that cause tuberculosis have evolved with the human populations following the out of Africa uh, migration and have established themselves, the bacteria, in diverse human populations following a, a phylogenetic distribution. And for us, what is even more fascinating is that whereas some lineages, like uh, lineage four, the European lineage is widespread in the world, probably the Portuguese took it everywhere, and the Spanish, uh, other lineages, like lineage five and lineage six, are restricted to West Africa. And in fact, the bacteria that belong to these, uh, these two lineages is not tu Mycobacterium tuberculosis, it is Mycobacterium africanum which is also human adapted and also causes tuberculosis. And this is a very neglected member of the tuberculosis causing bacteria. So our uh, study was really designed to answer these two questions. Why is Mycobacterium africanum geographically restricted to West Africa and possibly less virulent to humans? And can we learn from this pathogen to tackle Mycobacterium tuberculosis caused TB? So to come up with new solutions for this very devastating disease. So we designed our project really to try to figure out novel strategies to tackle TB. And we have basically three big questions that we would like to answer with it. And I'm going just to present you a flavor of what we are doing uh, and where we are at the scientific progress level in these three questions. So our teams are uh, based in Porto at I3S and in Bissau at the Laboratorio Nacional de Saúde Pública and the Banding Health Project. And as I say, we can't really live and work without each other because what we have, they don't have, and what they have, we don't have. So it's a perfect um, combination of expertise and resources. So, um, the first question that we wanted to answer is related to the genetic structure of the TB causing bacteria in Bissau. So this part of the project was really implemented in Bissau and the way it works is that uh, Bissau is divided uh, roughly in two areas for scientific purposes. The Banding Health Project study area and then the outside Banding Health Project area. And what we did was to enroll uh, between 2018 and 2020, we enrolled approximately 300 participants. So these are TB patients that are followed both at the study area and outside the study area. And from this, we performed clinical evaluation of a number of them. We collected sputum for, from uh, all of them. The DNA from the bacteria was extracted and some bacteria were grown and then we uh, classified uh, the um, genetic structure of the bacteria. So everything that you see in yellow here has been done in Bissau completely independently and what is in blue has been done at, at I3S. So as you can see, we can't really have this flow without uh, this collaboration. And uh, as part of the implementation of this uh, project, we also uh, had, uh, we started by developing some team dedicated workshops in Bissau, where we um, set up some protocols to collect, process, and register biological samples, and also some biosafety training. And this was actually then very handy <laughs> considering the COVID situation that came next. 
So um, just to give you an idea of the, what we are doing with these uh, DNAs and data, so we really uh, structure the genetic population of the bacteria. We have a lot of lineage 4, so that's the European lineage. We also have a lot of lineage 6, so that's the Mycobacterium africanum. So this, is, this shows the most recent panorama of TB in Bissau. We also found a number of TB patients who had not uh, infections with Mycobacterium tuberculosis or with uh, Mycobacterium africanum. So we are very interested now to see what bacteria were ca causing disease here. And just to show you that uh, the distribution within the study area and outside the study area is very similar. So now we can take these data and start performing some clinical uh, uh, and general analysis. So knowing the patients who have lineage 4 M tuberculosis or lineage 6 M africanum, we can start uh, looking at specific questions, for example, differences in HIV positive or negative co-infections, uh, diabetes, score of disease, and we are doing all that now. So for the second question we wanted to, to understand is that considering that we have two different bacteria here, do they interact with our immune system in a similar way or are they different? And so for that, uh, we enrolled patients and uh, healthy controls in Bissau. So again, uh, healthy people, MTB infected people or Mycobacterium africanum infected people. We got uh, the, the, the blood uh, processed in Bissau and then in uh, Porto, in collaboration actually with the EMBO um, in Germany, we sequenced the, the, the RNA, we got the transcriptome of these blood, uh, the, the bloods that were collected. And as you can appreciate, all the controls basically cluster to one side and all the TB patients to the other one. And the signatures look very similar independently of being MTB or Africanum. So indeed, these support that at the molecular level, Mycobacterium Africanum is also identified as a TB-causing bacteria. But if we perform a um, um, slightly more advanced um, uh, statistical and mathematical uh, analysis, we started seeing some differences in the intensity of the response. And what was very interesting to us, <laughs> maybe not so much to you, uh, <laughs> but what was very interesting is that the, uh, the patients infected with Mycobacterium africanum have a general downregulation of the signature. So the, mole the molecules and molecular pathways are similarly affected, but they are more evident in the case of MTB and less evident in the case of Mycobacterium africanum. And this comes to us as a, pos a possible explanation and pathway to now study why is it geographically restricted. So what we did was to also in Bissau to uh, collect um, peripheral blood mononuclear cells from African ancestry. In Porto, we collected from European ancestry. And then uh, all these cells were infected either in, in, in the biosafety level three lab with Mycobacterium africanum or Mycobacterium tuberculosis. And we started analyzing panels of cytokines. And in fact, as you can see, uh, wherever we have lineage six, so that's the africanum, it's always lower the response induced than with lineage four. And the African ancestry, PBMCs, respond even less to lineage 6 than the European one. So there is some um, genetic adaptation, if you want, that we are now trying to, to understand in detail between this specific bacteria and the people that specifically live in West Africa. So this is all very interesting, and we think we can uh, learn a lot now uh, about the, the, the pathways uh, operating in TB. So we also tried to have some social impact in, in Bissau. We did some technology transfer and capacitation that I already talked about with uh, protocols that are now fully implemented in Bissau and working very well. We organized some meetings and workshops. Of course, these were more uh, successful before the pandemic. We were able to launch the, the program, uh, the research program with a clinical oriented workshop in Bissau. And you can see here three team members discussing TB case studies at the clinical level with health professionals from Bissau. And we also did a celebration of the TB Day in 2019 
where we went, uh, members of our team went to, to families who have TB patients living at home and tried to explain what, what we, need, we need to care and what uh, we shouldn't be worried about in the context of TB. And this, I think, was very rewarding for everybody who participated. Of course, 2020, we couldn't do anything like this, so what we decided to do was to update our Math TV website with extra information on COVID-19 uh, so that we could disseminate some WHO information around. So I finish by thanking and mentioning the core members of the team. So at I3S, uh, Baltazar is from Bissau. He worked a lot during his PhD in there, and he has now completed his PhD in the framework of his project. And Marta is just starting her PhD. She was awarded an FCT grant to work also on Mycobacterium africanum. So she, she's very brave because she started within the pandemic and um, the moment she started, the, the, the country went into lockdown. So we have been working a lot uh, uh, on the bioinformatics side. And then in Bissau, we have Lilika at the INASA. We have Vitor Gomes as a Banding Health Project hardcore person, but many other people are involved. And Christian Veige, who is from Olos University, but coordinates some of the projects in the Banding Health Project. And we collaborate with um, other people in the world, and in particular with Iñaki Comas from Valencia, who is now starting to sequence all the bacteria that we collected in Bissau. And so we will have an even more detailed phylogenetic structure of what's going in there. So I'll just finish by thanking everyone for your attention, and particularly the FCT and Aga Khan Foundation for uh, continuous support. So thank you very much. Time, Nina, please. Right. Well, uh, I start uh, saying that it is a pleasure to be here and uh, to uh, listen to the projects. And uh, I want to thank the organizer for this opportunity to the FCT and to the Aga Khan Network. Uh, my role here is to provide a short comment on the work and the project that Margarida Sarayev has presented to you. Uh, the project is uh, about tuberculosis in Guinea-Bissau. The simple fact of putting the words tuberculosis and Guinea-Bissau in the same sentence means big trouble. Uh, tuberculosis is a, a major killer, is a mass murder is in short list of, uh, for centuries, of the major uh, killers of mankind. Uh, before the arrival of COVID-19, uh, it was the number three major killers in the world. Only heart attacks and stroke uh, were above tuberculosis. Uh, on the other end, uh, Guinea-Bissau is a difficult country to work. It's very poor and uh, is very unstable uh, politically, military, and social. Uh, to do work in Guinea-Bissau is always a challenge. Uh, I know that first-hand. I work in there. Uh, in fact, one of my PhD students have done his field work in Guinea-Bissau and in tuberculosis. <laughs> uh, so, what can be done? Uh, Margarita Sarayva uh, and this project try to produce part of the answers, to try to understand the enemy is the first step to be useful in fighting it. Uh, we listen to this presentation in a very sober and very um, technical way. And it hides all the difficulties of a, a project in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, when I read the reports and other information about the project, I was amazed how it was possible to achieve so much things, too much projects, 
in the middle of a pandemic in a country where even when things go well is a problematic country. How is it possible to do uh, molecular biology when the electrical grid is on and off every day? Uh, but she succeeded and she spread the knowledge. You are listening. She was even able to get a PhD student until the fin finishing line in the middle of these all complications. And as I had to start with another one, uh, I take my hat to Margarita Saraiva. Uh, with people like that, with people like her, the future of science in Portugal looks much more bright. Uh, even better, she has made school. All her collaborators uh, are learning to hard work and to achieve the results they need to achieve, even when the time is difficult, even when there is look downs everywhere, including uh, Lisbon, including Porto, including uh, Bissau. <coughs> uh, so the future of Guinea-Bissau also looks better, much less depressing than it was before this project started. Thank you, Margarida, and thank you for your whole team. <laughs> Now we are coming to, thank you very much, Sam. Uh, now we are coming to the last project. It's again from Minho. Uh, and it is called P, P for, for Sustainability. And uh, the leader of the group cannot be here, but there is uh, Professor Sergio Coelho will be presenting the work. And I'll ask you, please, to keep on time. We're almost, uh, we're almost on, on time. Thank you. Good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to greet everyone present at this meeting and thank the invitation on behalf of Professor Carlos Couto. Um, my name is Sergio Coelho and I'm a, a researcher at the University of Minho in the Department of Industrial Electronics. It is with great pleasure that I'm here today to present the project PV4 Sustainability in which I'm current, currently working on. Um, the PV for Sustainability is the result of the cooperation between the University of Minho and the Pedagogical University um, in Maputo. And it will, it will be precisely in Maputo that the project will be implemented, more specifically in the region of um, Mahakuen in the Mozambique. From a technological point of view, uh, PV for sustainability uh, consists of the development of a solar-based water pumping system whose main uh, objective is to support uh, agriculture activities uh, of local communities. Um, in turn, outside the pumping um, period, um, the energy surplus, pr pr um, the energy surplus pr provided by the solar PV models will be the, uh, stored in batteries for later use um, or used to power a uh, nanogrid. Uh, however, the social impact of the project uh, is of, of great importance since it is crucial to promote technological innovation and promote sustainable development practices in order to increase the quality of life of the community. As I mentioned before, um, the PV for sustainability is based on a solar photovoltaic energy used to power a water and pumping system. However, outside the pumping system period, the energy surplus of the panels is used to charge a battery, or when the batteries are uh, fully charged, used to power an Isla Nano grid, uh, which uh, presents uh, health services, security systems, smart outlets, smart lighting, education um, devices, or 
irrigation systems to, um, to aid the, the agriculture. During the night, when there is no power produced by the panels, it will be the batteries that will provide power to the ISO nanogrid. Uh, so far, at Mahakwan, um, several activities have been developed, namely the preparation and cleaning of the experimental field in which uh, the project will be implemented. Um, it was launched, the project Foundation Stone, on September the 1st in the last year. Uh, it was built on a, a bridge to access the experimental field during the rainy season, which, is a, which was a problem, and some equipment and material was delivered to the course of agriculture in the pedagogical university um, in Maputo. However, at the University of Minho, some uh, equipment of the water pumping system uh, have already arrived, and we are currently performing the, the first experimental tests to all of these devices, as it is possible to observe in the first, in the first picture. In parallel, we are also developing a combiner box, which will allow automatic and manual function, uh, as an example, to switch the operation modes of the system. It will present emergency stop the, uh, buttons, protection devices, uh, it will indicate lack of water in the well and also in the, um, in the, in the tank. And uh, a display will also be included uh, in order to show the current and voltage at the battery terminals and in the solar PV modules. However, to success, successfully complete the, the project, uh, there are some tasks that, that need to be, to, to be completed as it, as it is possible to observe in this timeline. In red are highlighted the tasks that we are currently working on, namely the development of the combiner box, as I explained in the previous, previous slide. Um, the experimental tests of the water pumping system are under uh, execution, and we are now uh, um, uh, beginning the acquisition process of several equi equi equipments, namely solar PV inverters, battery charge controllers, among others. Uh, to be more precise, it is crucial to finish the experimental tests of the water pumping system, continue to develop the combiner box that I've mentioned, uh, and acquire and execute the experimental tests on the, uh, the rest of the equipment that uh, it uh, has not arrived yet to the university due to the pandemic situation, all the, all the, um, the, um, the deliveries and the uh, um, were, were delayed. Uh, it is also important to implement a weather station and a graphic interface to aid the communities and the, the, the farmers. And lastly, implement a project in Mahakuen uh, in the beginning of, the, of 2022. Uh, in the last months of the project, it is crucial to obtain community testimonials from the community perform lectures and training actions uh, for people, and disseminate the experimental results in scientific articles and international conferences. As for the scientific outputs, in the first year of, year of the project, two journal papers were published um, in the Pedagogical University. Also, one book chapter was published by, uh, in the, the book Smart City, Smart Regions. Uh, the project was mentioned uh, at the Pedagogical University Journal. Uh, one master dissertation was completed and awarded at uh, the REN Award 2020. And in the second year of the project, one international conference paper was uh, published. Uh, now we have submitted um, a journal paper for the IEEE Transactions on Sustainable Energy. Uh, uh, the project appeared on the national television of Mozambique. Seven online meetings were, were issued during the, the last year. Um, another Master of Science dissertation was completed at the University of Minho, and one doctoral thesis was completed at the Pedagogical University. 
Um, the project was also presented at the ninth symposium of the group of power electronics and energy. And during um, this year, we have already uh, submitted a book chapter in the, in the book, Recent Advances in Renewable Energy Technologies, Volume 2. In this regard, I hereby finish my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Now I ask uh, uh, my colleague, Azim. He was involved. This is a joint uh, evaluation because there's obviously the, the, the technological part, but there's also a, a, an entrepreneurship link that we thought it would be interesting to be explored. And this is on top of uh, he. He is obviously a, a man of universal knowledge, but this is the main reason why he was involved as a part. And it was a very interesting partnership. And by the way, if Elena Nazare is listening, following us on YouTube, I send her my very warm regards. Please, uh, uh, I guess we are already good afternoon, and I'm, I know that we are running late on time. First of all, uh, um, um, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, Elena, I hope you are there. Uh, this is joint work with Elena Nazare. Um, um, this project, uh, again, is one kind of project that has immense uh, um, 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 importance for improving the quality of life of people. Um, I will mention a couple of points. Besides the, 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 the photovoltaic system that has been mentioned, this project also encompasses uh, the, uh, the, the, the establishment of um, a technology transfer um, a, a research center and a, a training of a, about 600 youths and uh, women in the, in, uh, in, in um, now not in Boan district, where initially it was uh, pro projected for, but is in, in, in Maracuén. Uh, it has suffered several setbacks. Uh, this project is implemented in a field which, which, was, which has suffered um, uh, um, floods in, in the past. Then the pandemic. Uh, it was also necessary to build a bridge to facilitate access to the to the project. So it has uh, suffered many. Um, setbacks, but overall uh, the project has been uh, doing very well in terms of scientific output. Uh, it is uh, um, uh, due to all the reasons that I mentioned slightly delayed with respect to the implementation, but everything seems to be running on track to, to, to initiate, initiate the implementation of the project. Um, in the field. Uh, it is expected that this uh, photovoltaic system will be able to not only improve the quality of life of where it is of the people that are going to implement this, but it has enormous replication uh, potential, uh, which we hope in the years to come ahead will be materialized uh, and uh, um, in, in improve the quality of life of many, many people. Um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, this project has been, obviously, as mentioned, uh, hosted by um, uh, Professor Karl Schkotu with, uh, with, uh, uh, and uh, with the involvement of Pedagogical University, but it has also an important partnership uh, with Fundação Joaquim Chissano, which is a reputable or highly reputable uh, institution in, um, in, in, in Mozambique, and uh, uh, it all leads us to think that it's all on track and the improvement in the quality of life of people will actually be materialized over the years to come. So I will not take much more time. I guess it may be much more prolific to listen to the president of the uh, Aga Khan University. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now it is my big pleasure and honor to ask uh, President Feroz Razou to, to address us. And uh, he, he, he's been building institutions, at least I have the privilege of following this. And uh, I'm, we are all strong believers in, in strong institutions because the time of the lonely researcher that is doing this tremendous effort and uh, arrives right at the end totally exhausted and then claims that he, he should be totally supported by, I think these are, with all due respect, these are times that are gone. We need strong institutions to support strong projects and who else but Feroz Vazul to talk to us briefly about that. He's, he's inspirational to all of us. And thank you very much to be with us and to address us. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Thank you very much, um, first for the invitation. I um, want to begin by recognizing Ambassador Nazim Ahmed from the Aga Khan Development Network, the Vice President Jose Espranza for his participation and his leadership, uh, but also uh, Professor Antonio Rendas for uh, his uh, advice, wisdom, and uh, uh, quiet direction, as all of you know. Antonio is uh, extremely uh, talented in many ways, uh, but uh, he leads in a way that is uh, very powerful but not overwhelming. So uh, for that, I want to, to thank uh, Antonio for his, uh, his contribution. Uh, I want to begin by first to say, uh, reflecting on the fact that, as you heard, this project started in 2016. At least that was the first meeting we had with the Minister Aitor and uh, Professor Rendas, Nazim and I, we sat and tried to conceptualize this initiative that was agreed between His Highness the Aga Khan and the government of Portugal as part of the establish establishment of the seat of the Ismaili Imamat. Uh, in, in Lisbon, or in Portugal. And uh, we had to conceptualize what would this project, how will this initiative work, how will it promote research in Portugal, but also for the benefit of people outside Portugal, and how will it engage uh, other partners, uh, including the Aga Khan Development Network, into this particular initiative. And today, as I've heard, this is for the second time, presentations from the researchers who were selected uh, out of the first call, which all of you represent, uh, it is really remarkable to see the progress that has taken place. And um, as you heard uh, from Professor Rendas that uh, the second call also has been completed and there will be some announcements coming later from the FCT, I assume, uh, about that. Uh, the quality of uh, proposals, the quality of uh, research questions, uh, and the quality of the uh, potential impact uh, that we're seeing progressively between the calls has been uh, improving, has been enhancing, which is uh, really, uh, for us involved in the founding of it, extremely uh, satisfying and heartwarming. But I think for the impact to the population of the world, I think it's pretty remarkable. So. I think the project or the initiative is achieving what it was set out to achieve. I think in many ways it's exceeding the expectations that we had by seeing the interest the of the researchers, but also the impact that it's making, as Azim said, to the quality of life uh, of the people whom we are trying to uh, work with uh, as partners and who will benefit uh, from, from this particular initiative. I think it's also a point of reflection. Now that we have been doing this for five years, we have won uh, the first call, which is in the second year of implementation, and one more year to go. And we also have now the announcement of the second call. Uh, I think there are lessons that we have learned from the first five years that we also need to reflect on. I say we, that is us on the steering committee and with the FCT on the actual um, management of the process and management of, the, of this uh, initiative is what have we learned in the first five years? What can we change? What can we improve? How can we make it even more impactful? Uh, and this is a reflection and a, and a review uh, that I hope that my colleagues and I from the Aga Khan Development Network and the FCT will be undertaking because there is much I think we are learning and have learned about things we can do differently and things we can do better, uh, but also from the evaluation that uh, Professor Rendas is doing and his team, I should say, of evaluators, uh, external evaluators, to help us understand uh, what we could do better in both selecting the projects but also supporting the projects. So I think that's, uh, those are the lessons that I also wanted us to to not lose sight of and not lose the opportunity to see how we can continue to, to improve. So I want to thank uh, uh, the, the, our host today for um, giving me the opportunity to speak to you today and address you. And I look forward to even better results uh, as we 
do a review uh, again in a year from now, uh, and as we also start to do the review of the first year of the second call uh, and get ready for the third call, because there is a third call that we also need to apply the lessons from the first and second call to the third one to see how uh, well uh, we will do. But congratulations to all of you who worked on these projects, and we look forward to, the, uh, to reviewing the impact that you are making, because at the end of the day, it's about impact uh, in, in improving the lives of people that we are looking to serve. So thank you very much to all of you. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for these inspiring words and uh, for the good news for the future. Uh, and thanks to all the audience. And uh, uh, well, there is a light lunch waiting for us. So uh, please enjoy and the rest of the conference. Thanks a lot. And uh, good luck for the projects and for the implementation and for the impact. Thank you. Thank you.